This is where old bottles become new again. This high-tech facility is the result of a three-year-old partnership between United Resource Recovery Corporation and Coca-Cola. The operators say it's on track to become the largest bottle-to-bottle -bottle recycling plant in the world by the end of this year. What our main objective is, is to get the clear PET out to recycle. PET, also known as polyester, is the plastic used to make most soft drink bottles. The plant buys bales of filthy plastic bottles from curbside recycling programs, sorts them automatically, then manually grinds them into flakes, finally transforming them into a purified food grade product. In one building we, re we remove the polyester from the dirt, in the other one we purify the polyester. Nobody else in, that I'm aware of it in the world can utilize this feedstock. That makes it very easy for the consumer. The end result must undergo stringent quality control testing. And basically this is what our product looks like. It's in the form of a chip. Those chips are then blended with virgin PET pellets to make new bottles. Right now they contain between 10 and 20 percent recycled material, but the goal is to get closer to 100 percent. So Coke is encouraging its customers to get with the program. If you've had a Coke in the last 40 years, you've played a part in one of the largest beverage recycling efforts in the world. And it has even bigger plans for its bottles. Coca-Cola is looking ahead with this, what they call a step towards the bottle of the future. It's called a plant bottle and it's made from up to 30% of plant-based materials. The goal is to eventually make these bottles 100% plant-based. We think that that is a great contribution to climate change because it reduces the climate uh, impact, the greenhouse gas impact of that bottle, and it is delinking that bottle from reliance on, on, on petrochemicals. Coca-Cola does, however, have its environmental critics, perhaps nowhere more than in India, where in March, a government panel in Kerala State recommended Coke pay some $48 million as compensation for environmental damage allegedly caused by one of its bottling plants. A scientist from the Indian Institute of Technology casts doubt on allegations that the plant, now closed, polluted the local water supply. We found that the source areas are away from the, the plant site. So the only possibility is that these sources can be in the form of some dump, which can be one possibility. Otherwise, there's no possibility of uh, something coming from the plant site and uh, moving in that direction. Indian activists have been particularly hard on Coca-Cola over the years. We are very strong in the evidence uh, of, uh, 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 which confirm that in fact Coca-Cola company has located many of its bottling plants in water stressed areas in India and it all, they also confirm that once the Coca-Cola company started its operations in these water stressed areas the groundwater conditions um, deteriorated very very rapidly an independent scientific study published in 2008 did find some problems at Coca-Cola facilities in India. But at the federal level, the company's not violated any laws, nor has it had to pay any penalties. Coca-Cola does note, though, that the report is an important learning experience, and it insists it's been diligently implementing the report's recommendations, including improved engagement with communities where it operates. A prominent environmental group appears to have no reservations. The World Wildlife Fund has joined forces with the soft drink giant. Together, they say their goal is to protect watersheds, increase energy efficiency, and limit emissions at Coke facilities. WWF is the world's largest environmental uh, network, and Coke is the, one of the largest uh, networks, of, uh, the largest network of bottlers around the world. And we're working together in specific places. A lot of the companies we work with care deeply about their brands. And the leading companies recognize that their brands are also bound up in how they treat the planet. For its efforts, Newsweek magazine listed Coke and one of its bottlers among the top 60 green companies in the United States last year. The company says being green is a win-win proposition. Less water, less energy, less packaging means less waste, less pollution. Uh, less cost. At the same time, uh, there is an opportunity, in a sense, outside 
to connect with customers, to connect with consumers. And if it yields results, that's a strategy corporations and environmentalists can buy into.